The Federal Reserve is an organization that Anonymous is collectively against, but if it falls, the entire United States will be thrown into a state worse than the Great Depression. An economic collapse means that no one can buy food, shelter, and other basic necessities. Gas shortages will take place, and electricity could potentially be shut off. Now, you're asking, what do you mean, economic collapse? You see, the Federal Reserve runs on a debt-based system. There are currently only 258 billion physical US dollars in existence, Walmart makes more in a year than that. That means that the rest of the US currency is digital, this digital currency only has value because it is credit from other nations. Most of the money in the United States is borrowed from foreign countries, that means, that the countries can take it back. Once they realize that the US is never going to be able to pay them back, they will take back their investment. Guess what that means? All of the money in bank accounts will vanish, credit cards will be useless. This nearly happened in 2008, when the housing market crashed. They took back their investments, their money. Farmers won't be able to buy materials to farm, thus, grocery stores won't have any food. You could argue, that that would mean the success of Operation Icarus. That is true, but at the cost of the US as we know it. Wait, but Japan already has a debt that is more than double that of its GDP, how come this hasn't happened to them? Oh yeah. But Japan's economy recently collapsed in 1990, and many economists have predicted that it will again within the next few years. Sweden, another debt-based economy, is also, on the verge of collapse. But, Greece, completely collapsed because it is a debt-based economy. Investors begin to take money out, and they were forced to hyperinflate their currency in order to pay them back. The EU was recently forced to pay them $7.8 billion so Greece can pay back the debt. Something similar will happen to the EUs, without the credit, and money in the bank, people are going to need cash. So the government will have to print crazy amounts of money to compensate for the American people's losses. So, the good news. There will be no more debt, the debt in the US will reset, and people who owe money won't owe that money anymore. Without the banks, everyone will own each of their houses. Okay, this has been happening for a while, so why hasn't the US already collapsed? The government dropped the interest rates to zero in 2008, and the US has survived because so many investors trust the United States stock. Once the investors leave, basically when the countries start taking back their debt, when the country can't borrow anymore, the stocks will plummet, and the stock market will crash. What does that mean? It means the fall of the banks, and good news for Anonymous, Operation Icarus will have succeeded. In fact, I say we call off Operation Icarus. A bank crash is inevitable, and we can't actually attack the banks. Operation Icarus should have never existed in the first place, the Federal Reserve is meant to fail, all it was intended to do was benefit the makers during their lifetimes. This also means that you citizens will need a viable alternative currency soon. Bitcoin looked promising, but the sad reality is that it is no longer feasible. Bitcoin banks have been hacked 10 times, and Bitcoin banks simply cannot take on the US population. They've all reached their transaction limit more than once, despite only around 5% of the population using it. That 5% can't even use it for average, everyday activities. So, if Bitcoin isn't viable, now what? There's two more currencies that currently hold promise, one is Ethereum. Its value has risen substantially. Ethereum is secure and looks to be able to take on the US population. Also, the Ethereum network can be used for a lot more than currency. It seems to be a link for computers, much like the internet, except it is anonymous. Moreno is the other currency, although its value isn't nearly as high as Ethereum or Bitcoin, Moreno is an anonymous currency that promises to be secure. It isn't clear if Moreno can take on enough transactions, but it holds promise. Now, the fall of the Federal Reserve might mean the fall of the government, that, might be good, depending on your point of view. 
people will become fed up and just riot and knock down Washington. I previously made a video detailing how the United States debt-based economy may fall, but what will trigger that collapse? If you haven't seen part 1, click on the link in the description. But first, I need to address something. Every country in the world will have an economic collapse at some point. Greece has already shown us why. Every first world country, excluding possibly Russia, has a rising national, corporate, and individual debt. Yes, all three do matter. There is a reason Japan has yet to collapse despite an enormous national debt. Japan's businesses haven't been borrowing as much money, and those that do, pay it off. Same with their citizens. But, every world economy will eventually collapse, simply put, their money is no backing. We go on giving these pieces of paper value, when, they hold no value whatsoever. There is no gold, silver, or anything backing, either the euro or the US dollar. But, what will be the first to go? They are four major world currencies. The US dollar, the Japanese yen, the Chinese yuan, and the euro. It shouldn't come to anybody's surprise that it will be the US dollar. The country currently has enormous individual and national debt. The corporate monopolies have kept it afloat, that won't matter when the credit bubble collapses. Credit card companies loan out money, and then people use the cards, which are basically loaners in your pocket, to buy things. Which, causes people to buy a lot more than they can, thus many accumulate enormous credit card debt. That debt becomes an asset to the credit card company. They trade that asset for money, and other assets. They also sell those assets to investors. Once that person declares bankruptcy, those assets become worthless. If and when enough people declare bankruptcy in the same year, the stock market will crash. Investors will take their money out, no longer trusting any stocks, due to those credit assets becoming worthless. Many, many companies trade with credit card companies for those assets. Once those assets become worthless, and the stock market crashes, what I covered in part 1 will occur. And then the United States will no longer be a great nation. Once the economic crisis ends, the United States won't be recognizable. The American dream will be dead. Let me detail what will occur during the economic crisis, after the stock market crash. First, people will riot. More than half the population will basically be in poverty. Only those who have actual cash and precious metals be out of poverty. In a fit of rage, one man, a citizen of New York, chucks a rock at a corporation. Other citizens follow, breaking into untouched shops containing lots of goods and stealing them. The police will be trying to control them, but will be failing. Some of the officers will join in, all so upset about having no money. Ever since the Federal Reserve collapsed just two weeks ago, next to no one has been able to get food. 70% of the population will be jobless. Citizens will begin stoning the police, not trusting them. One of the cops will panic and shoot one of the citizens. The rioters will rage and team up on the cops. The cops, panicking, will taser shoot and kill many of them. This will happen in more than one city. The government will sweep in, after about two and a half weeks, the government will give everyone a way to pay for goods and services, temporarily. But, they will also install a curfew, the crime rate will have skyrocketed across the country. People will be stealing from one another like mad, so the government will feel a curfew will be necessary. Also, they will have censored the media and covered up the police shootings. They will have said those that died will have died from the violence in the riot, which will be technically true. To disturb the unemployment rate, the government will pay corporations using its own assets. The central government will be bigger than ever before, remembering the revolution, they will spy on citizens, killing any that they deem a threat. Censorship would be extreme. Anything that villainies the state will not be allowed to air. Why didn't this happen during the Great Depression? Because there was no extreme media, 
and people were a lot better at protecting themselves. Also, this economic crisis is 100 times worse than the Great Depression. Police officers never quit during the Great Depression, cash was used, a lot. The currency wasn't debt-based, thus money never became worthless. But, the United States is persistent, anyone who commits a crime will be put in prison for longer than ever before. The government will become the main employer of the population, which, wouldn't be bad, if it didn't give them all of the power. Once it buy out the last businesses remaining, the government will become socialist. The Democrats will have exactly what they wanted, a huge state, that provides everything for the citizens. Anyone that has material wealth will lose it, as the state seizes it for redistribution. At this point, US cash and credit will be worthless. But, look who wins, the government. They have more power than ever, in a now totalitarian state, they will have complete control. And you know what that means, more poisoning, more pharmaceutical conspiracies, a lot more censorship, no more constitution, and what looks like a police state. The politicians will be able to pocket the money made by this new socialist regime. Oh, but the local governments run the police, not the central government. Well, those local government answer to. Also, the FBI will grow substantially, those jobs have to come from somewhere. Oh, with an infinite FBI, and a huge military, that the president has control of. Shouldn't Congress be a puppet? And before you correct me, yes I know the Attorney General controls the Department of Justice, but, who does that person answer to? The President. I bet some of you religious theorists are going to blame Ray Mabus if this scenario occurs. I don't know how, or why, but you will. If you don't believe that will happen, look at Brazil, and look at the United States. I took into account the differences as well, which is why the United States will be a bit more controlling, but also more unstable to rebellion. These differences being, the FBI could very easily take down the president. They have the power to raid and investigate the president. The FBI doesn't have to listen to him either. Also, in Brazil, there aren't as many assets present that would help the government create jobs. Basically, where Brazil fell back down to third world status, the US will become a vulnerable, temporary, first world, communist nation. Communist because, before the economic collapse, the public will and is, begging for communist principles. Communism is socialism, except with complete social and income equality, which is what the public is begging for. Oh, they'll get it in this scenario, but they won't like it. Now, in conclusion, that was only a scenario, made to make a point. It could happen, sure, but it could very well not happen. However, the economic collapse is inevitable. The economic crisis might not be preventable, but what happens as a result, is in the hands of every citizen of the United States of America. Watch my, a new group, video for one way you could help. The bigger a group, the more good it can do.